Hi, I'm Susanna Harvey, I'm the CEO of Cotswold Airport and welcome to Negus. So welcome to the vlog, thank you so much for having me. Oh, thanks for asking. So tell me a bit about this aircraft. So uh, this is Negus. Uh, this is one of the last BA-747s that departed London Heathrow. She's very special. Um, as part of the uh, centenary celebrations with British Airways, she was repainted last year in the historic Negus paint scheme. So um, she's very, very special indeed. She's the only one of her kind, and we're very lucky to have acquired her. So what are your plans with Negus then? What's the plans going forward? Okay, so well, we started negotiations with BA um, it was, it was about August time and I, I basically asked the question if we could have one and keep one and they said yes and, uh, and she was the most um, obvious one to be working towards securing because of the historic value with the uh, livery etc. So it took about a month to finalise the contract and negotiations but BA effectively donated her to us. We have an obligation to maintain her as a museum piece um, and to use for educational purposes etc as well. But obviously as I'm sure you can understand there's quite a substantial uh, amount of money involved every year to maintain her so we have permission to utilize her for commercial and corporate events um, and on that basis we uh, she's she's remaining completely intact the only thing that we're doing is removing the economy seat so we have a bit more of a clear span space to use for sort of corporate and commercial events and I believe you can actually own a part of this aircraft as well right you can so the only thing we're disposing off of the economy seats uh, they're for sale at the moment on eBay and uh, you can grab yourself a, a bit of iconic history um, but uh, the the in-flight entertainment system is actually still owned by Panasonic as it is with all of the BA aircraft um, so they came back in to remove the IFE from the economy seats but the rest they are given to us on permanent loan which is um, very kind of them to support us in, in, in that respect and the hope is is that we'll be when she is up and running we'll be able to do cinema screenings on board as well so it'll be a bit of a novelty and you can come on board with your popcorn and watch the latest flop bus buster re release so fantastic i mean i can't wait to watch top gun on here That's i know great, right? <laughs> yeah. and then yeah we could do it back to back the old and the new ones so absolutely mm. so i know the last 12 months have been crazy for this airport in particular right yeah tell me a bit of what's been happening over the last 12 months. yeah so our whole sort of business model obviously changed very very quickly and very dramatically on the back of covid so uh, with the initial lockdown um, we were basically shut down for three months on the back of CAA directives so uh, they only eventually then allowed sort of maintenance um, and check flights. Uh, we were very lucky to be able to secure a lot of the aircraft for long-term parking um, and maintenance mainly through our main MRA tenant um, ASI, Air Salvage International. So they secured all of the aircraft coming in and obviously we get a revenue from parking for that. Um, but effectively all of our all of our revenue from fuel sales and movements etc just finished overnight. Um, so obviously this second lockdown hasn't been quite so bad and obviously we're coming through the, the other side of it now. Um, there is still obviously a marked um, decrease in movements. Um, um, you know we're hopeful that once this vaccine's rolled out and we can eventually get back to normal that next year will hopefully be a much better year for us. We can get our restaurant reopen um, and it also coincides nicely. We've got our GNSS approach um, which is going through the final stages of having its plate issued which should hopefully be done in January or February um, which will enable us to be more functional in rubbish weather, basically, um, and will increase our business jet traffic. I mean, it's a fantastic uh, airfield. I love flying into here. It's only Good. a short hop from Enstone, but um, mm. it's just got a really lovely feel about it. And the, when the cafe's open, it's just definitely, definitely works. Yeah, so, yeah. When the sun's out, it's great, yeah. and you know, there's a great atmosphere here. And you know, I, it's one thing I hopefully we do pride ourselves in is being welcoming um, and um, you know, a nice, a nice place for visiting pilots to come along. 
to. So do you have your license yourself? Do you fly? No, well, I do. I've got the basics. So I basically, I'm more on the business development side, um, commercial, um, real estate, etc. So uh, I started to study for my PPL the um, uh, year I fell pregnant with my twins and that went out the window. Um, I've got about six hours on fast jets. Um, I've done all my flight training on the sim for um, A380s and uh, Airbus and Toulouse. Um, so I've got the basics, but no, I don't have my PPL. Um, and I really should, <laughs> really should get off my bum and get it, get it done as soon as I get five minutes and uh, things sort of calm down a bit more here. But, um, but yeah, so that's why um, I've got my my right hand man Chris Ackroyd, who's our ops director and airport manager. Um, obviously he's PPL holder and he's very experienced um, so he takes care all of the operational side for me and I deal with all the business side. Hopefully this year we can get you up in the PA28 with me. Oh that'd be we'll, amazing. We'll, get and, uh, we'll fly over your house and see the twins. Yeah well. no that'd be great that'd be really cool. So tell me I know a lot of people were excited on Instagram that there may be a scholarship scheme here. Yes well there certainly is so we do uh, we do an annual scholarship program every year. We take on 10 kids between the age of 14 and 18. Uh, they generally have to be based in either Wiltshire or Gloucestershire. And what we're doing um, with any extra revenue that we make from hiring out Negus, that will be put back into our scholarship program. So once we've covered our maintenance costs, etc., for the infrastructure that we've got to put in, because we're having to put in a new concrete pad behind Aviate, our restaurant here, so she will actually be public side and very easily accessed um, by the public. Once all that's been done, I've just ordered a new ground power unit, uh, ground air conditioning unit, etc. It's not cheap um, this year. It'll probably cost me about 100 grand to get that set up um, and then eventually the revenue will start coming through from hiring her out for corporate events etc. Any profit that we make over and above our direct maintenance and running costs for her will go back into our scholarship programme and then hopefully that will enable us to pay and fund two or three PPLs every year for you know the top students that come out on the back end of it so fantastic i mean that's such a great thing i mean the scholarship system i'm looking into to help other people next year mm. and i think it's mm. just i think you, so you might rare. be a bit old for the age <laughs> 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 sorry i know they live last year i'm sorry but um there's hardly any any around, isn't there? Yeah, and yeah. So we're one of the very few people that um, do a really comprehensive scholarship program, and we have a really good hit rate with um, the students that go on to a career in aviation. Um, obviously, it didn't happen this year because of COVID, which is obviously very unfortunate. But last year, our very one of on our first round of scholarships, one of the girls that was on board for that, um, she was there last year as flight instructor, teaching the next batch. So, uh, yeah, it's really good. Wow, that's great. And um, I know obviously you're, you're on Instagram mm -hmm. and I think it's a refreshing change to see you know a CEO of an airport have so much personality on Instagram. You're, uh, you're just you aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I normally do my Sunday sessions questions and answers and um, yeah so the ones that I can publish then, <laughs> then go on um, but and uh, you know and, and what comes from that as well is you get some really good ideas come through from public and people that use the facility as well and um, it can ignite you know a new idea for us going forward so I think it's really important to interact with people and get some feedback so fantastic well it's um you know, it's a great opportunity to interact with a you know CEO, and it doesn't happen very often, does it? You know. Aww. So, other plans for the future going forward? Where do you see this airfield in the next five or ten years? Well, we're you know we are officially sort of Europe's largest private airport. I mean, our runway is only two meters shorter than Bristol uh, International, and I really see us developing our business jet side. And we we've got some really interesting tenants um, coming in on the pipeline. So um, hopefully, they scope to have a more of a like a research and development centre here. One of my new tenants, Zero Avia, they're developing the first hydrogen powered drivetrain for zero emission aircraft, um, which is going to be absolutely epic when it comes off. And I've got another one of my tenants is um, developing fuel systems for hypersonic jet engines. So uh, there is a lot going on here. It's never a dull moment. Um, and I really I'm trying to push that side of R&D here, almost like a centre center for excellence. So um, yeah, it's, a, it's really exciting times. And with uh, British Airways going forward, how involved are they going to be in, in, in Negus? 
So, um, so the contract we have with them is that um, we, we do own Egus ourselves now, so she is ours, um, but we have certain contractual obligations um, to protect their brand, which you can understand as well. They're very, very supportive of what we're doing um, with her, so we are incredibly grateful to them um, for, the, for their help and to Panasonic for effectively giving us the rest of the IFE in on permanent loan. Um, but um, yeah, so we, you know, there's, there, there'll be tech issues that we've got going forward. We've had a lot of support from the local community who are people that are currently licensed, 747 engineers, etc. Um, but we will be bouncing backwards and forwards from over the years um, when we need some support with, you know, whatever it is that's, that's you know going on. So I'm mean, assuming you're looking for like, volunteers to help out as well, right? Oh uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So if anyone's local, you know, and they um, they've got experience or they want to come and get involved when the events start rolling out, um, we will have to start building up a probably a bit more of a new restructured events department around her because I think she's going to be very busy when she's launched next year. And I believe you, you maybe even be able to get married here for all those AV. AV yes, yeah. So we do we do have a marriage license for the airport and we. Have have done uh, wedding receptions on our other 747, the MK Airlines cargo one. But the plan is for that is um, she sustained quite a lot of damage in the recent storms that have come through and is really sort of be beyond economical repair. So she will most likely get scrapped. Um, this will be our main events centre and venue for parties, corporate launches and that kind of thing. Well, as soon as we can party again, I'd love to come back and uh, absolutely raise a glass of champagne. Yeah, we'll have to get you along to the launch event. Absolutely. So I think it's, I think it'll be quite a messy one. So <laughs> <laughs> luckily they're deactivating all the escape slides, so there won't oh, be anyone nice. going off. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm sure this aircraft's got some stories to tell. Yes. <laughs> of its own. Thank you so much for your time. Today. Oh no, you're most welcome, and thanks for asking me to come on. <laughs>